All right, there we are. We are now live. All right. Everybody, welcome to the East Bureau Discovery News Broadcast. Um, today is going to be, you know, we're, gonna, we're not going to have a big long show tonight, uh, but uh, we got Tracy Arnold. Uh, Tracy Arnold is located, well, I'm not even going to give you her location out because that, you know, that could, I believe could, I don't know, perhaps you know, alter a few things, I don't know, uh, <laughs> but Tracy Arnold is, um, he's the founder of the New River Valley Bigfoot Organization here in Virginia, um, also an ECBRO division, um, Tracy Arnold is also co-founder to the ECBRO, um, and Tracy Arnold has a story to tell, uh, he shared it uh, numerous times, uh, last time he shared it was on Night Calls Radio, and I actually listened to the whole thing, it was a great show, um, you know, he shared his information very well, and he was very clear. And I was very thrilled to hear it. And I, you know, I, like I've been telling everybody, I can't wait to get him on here again. I gotta, you know, I, I gotta hear some more. Um, so we're gonna get into Tracy Arnold's. Uh, you know, ask him a couple questions, and you know, and, and Tracy, as we you know get into this, just share what you want to share. I mean. I know you've told it so many times, you know, already, and it, it, you know, sometimes that can be a little aggravating on your part, you know, just kind of repeating it. And I mean, it. I don't know. I'm gonna let you take it from here. Um, if you want to start off, kind of giving us the a time period, like how long ago was this? I know it was fairly recent, like within a couple of months or so. But uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and let you take it from here, Tracy. All right, I, I appreciate it, Daniel, and uh, I'd like to see it, say hey to everybody to New River Valley. Bigfoot organization, ECA, ECBRO members, uh, uh, looking good for this year. I think we're going to do something major uh, with the group of guys that we've all got here, and you know, and both groups working together. I think this may be a good year for all of us. Uh, as far as uh, my encounter uh, is back in August of this past uh, past year, uh, really hot day, I mean, it was a 93 degree day. Of course, it was a uh, Early in the morning, when uh, I first got there, it was real foggy and misty. You know how the Appalachian Mountains could be. You know, morning up to about ten thirty, it can feel cool and misty, and you know, a good little breeze coming through, and then boom, you know, twelve o'clock sun comes out, it's ninety degrees. <laughs> and it's just one of those days where you was enjoying the morning after having a you know, pretty hard week at work, and you know, I was still working at that time. When I had my own camera, I was getting paid for it. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Well, I had, uh, went up on the mountain where, uh, Iron Bigfoot had made one of their, uh, shows, uh, from Virginia. It was called the, uh, you know, Sasquatch in Virginia. And, uh, I had went up there and looked into two of the reports from the BFRO. And you know, I look into all the reports as far as, you know, as it got in our local area to find out where, you know, most of our, you know, most of your activity happens around certain times of the year. And at this time of the year, the BFRO had been there the recent year before that. And, well, to make a long story short, I had looked into two of those reports and found some, you know, things that, Said, okay, it could be a squatch or it could be a human. Really didn't know. Uh, didn't even document, didn't take no pictures or nothing because it was so close to a campground. I mean, you know, you know how young guys are. They'll get out there and bend trees over and make little TP structures themselves. And oh, they, yeah, absolutely. They didn't look, you know, like a squatch had done it, but I should have. <laughs> After this, uh, you know, before I had this encounter, I should have done that. Uh, anyway, on the way down, I was going to take a couple of pictures for my nature walks photos. You know, the other page I've got. And at the bottom of the mountain, there was a, a pretty wide stream. And uh, it, you know, I'd heard there was a nice waterfall there. So I needed a waterfall picture for you know, my nature walks photos. So I went up this trail after getting there. And you know, I... Took a, you know, just about 100 yards in, I took a picture of the water, and, you know, I've actually got it posted just for my report. And after being there for probably, you know, 15, 20 minutes of walking, about 200 yards in, I heard a crack off in my life. And it wasn't like a 
It wasn't like a, uh, uh, wasn't like a big branch break. It was more like a small branch, like a snap. And as as I went, and you know, took a couple more steps, about two more minutes or so, it was like I froze my step. I mean, from my left foot was planted on the ground, and I was taking a right. And my, my right foot was on, getting ready to hit the ground, and I just froze. And I was looking this direction, and something just froze in my in my tracks, and I just kind of go on through that way, and there it was between the two big laurel thickets on the right. <clears throat> it wasn't a space probably about five foot wide, and this thing was. I mean, it was about a few inches on both sides of the wall, you know, that I could see between it mm. and the wall. It was like as big, as wide as my Jeep at the shoulders. Wow. And That's actually pretty wide right there because, I mean, yeah, uh, for those who don't know, uh, Tracy Dry, when he said he's as wide as his Jeep, that's pretty wide because what the Jeep he has is, is uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Jeep Liberty Sport or? Yeah, Jeep Liberty. Just a regular old okay. Jeep Liberty, four-wheel drive or not like it. <laughs> yeah. Little, yeah, and it's <laughs> I dare yeah, get one side of yeah. the other. Yeah, for shoulders to be that wide, that's actually like muscle right there. <laughs> it was, it was so. very intimidating. It scared me to death to the point where you know, after this encounter, it took Dennis it was probably a month and a half to get me back in the woods, and I asked him to hold my hand. <laughs> you know, wow. <laughs> You know, I mean, I, I was shaking the whole time we yeah. were walking, and I was taking baby steps. It's like learning how to walk in the woods all over again. Cause right. I could drive up in the woods and sit there in the car and look around, you know, look around stuff like that, but I would not get out if I was close to the woods. So, right. Uh, well, well, let me let me ask you this real quick. Now, before I even ask the question, I'm going to make a statement. You know, and you know, and this goes for I know everybody on the panel. Um, uh, I know me, Tracy, and I believe I can speak for, for her, uh, you know, Glenn and Sam. We're all against killing Sasquatch. That's Certainly. out of the question. Where, you know, and, but Tracy, now, I know, you know, I don't know if, if I'm wrong for bringing this up, but I know Tracy, uh, like many other researchers, carry, uh, carries a firearm uh, you know, most of the time when he goes into the woods. Um, now, is this something you do? You still do, or like I'm working on doing this because you know I, you know I, I got me a hand, uh, newly purchased handgun. Um, you know I, I go out in the woods all the time by myself. Um, I have encountered things in the past, nothing recent, because I, mean, I feel pretty confident when I'm out there. But it's just you never know, like bears, mountain lions, you know, for predator purposes, you know. Um, but that's why I wanted to make a statement first, because before I brought up the the handgun. But you still carry protection out there. Yes, I do, and uh, fortunately that day, you know, when I when I was done most of my squatching, I was on a time clock. So whenever yeah. I was at work, I couldn't carry a firearm. Right. But you know, when I go to my to the research areas that I go to now, I'm off the clock. You know, I'll have it. You know, I'll have my nine on my side, and and that's not for squat. That's mainly for to run off. Uh, bear or kill a rattlesnake or you never know who you're going to come up on that's on running a meth lab in the woods you know nowadays so yeah. you need your protection not just from the animals but from the <clears throat> people out in the woods the wackos that get out there yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, we've never we've had meth Huh? I'm sorry. I was interrupting you. No, you're fine. Uh, you just never know when you might need that for your own protection. And if you yeah. run across a, a rogue squash that may would harm you, <laughs> and I've heard people are shooting them, just, you know, just over on the other side of research area here. There's one, oh, yeah. two, in, well, two people, one encounter. The one shot one. It ran up, and the other guy shot the, you know, shot the same one. Hmm. There was only one between deer hunters, and that was here two years ago. That was a report from two years ago. Wow. So, um, um. Now, from from listening to the, your uh, your interview on night callers, um, because I remember as you after you had your sighting and you saw what you saw, you started um, now you started making the video now. 
It, but it, in the uh, in the Night Call's um, interview, you had mentioned how when you were walking, because you were kind of disoriented and you were trying to find the path that you came in on, and at the same time, you heard the subject somewhere over in the, in the woods. You could hear the movement. It sounded like he was paralleling you. Uh, what, I mean, was this correct? Did I hear that correctly? Or I, I wasn't sure if it was parallel me or if it was a different one. Oh. Or, or if it just made such a sound and it sounded like it was still on top of me, but it was, in the, it was going the other way. I'm not sure how that was. But the sound I heard, okay. I could distinct it between a vocalization like a... Or, or, a, or a smacking something or like a tree or something like that, maybe a loud pow-pow. You know, real quick. Pow. <laughs> I mean, it was right. just the video that I went back and heard, listened to it. Sounds more like a clack. You know, like a clack clack. But I'm not sure right. if it was rock clack or a wood knock or if it was just making localization because the audio is kind of off a little bit where I was, I was in, I, you know, the thing was in the wind. So, I, I mean, once I got to, you know, well, after I had the encounter, start backing up like treating me like a bear because this thing was looked like it was sizing me up. It was, you know, started looking at me mm. in the face and it had his mouth open like I did. It had his eyes were you know that big around and about you know they fall apart and mm. just it started looking at me you know, from up down up down and it I didn't know if it was going to come after me or if I was going to make it out of there or not. I mean, I was scared to death, so I yeah. backed out you know, kind of real slow till it was out of my view, spun around, and, hey, wait a minute, <laughs> click, and I started, <laughs> you know, started a video, I mean, and it's just like mm -hmm. that night we had in Counter May of, you know, 2013, what? Four, uh... Uh, 14 actually yeah, it was 14. yeah May 3rd of 2014 yeah. yeah but it was just like it uh, was... it's funny that you bring that up because I yeah because I was going to ask something kind of related to that because mm -hmm. in your sighting I mean I know you you know it, it frightened you and it, it kind of freaked you out in a way but but I mean if you kind of think it back on it is and how you you know you said it looked like it was sizing you up do you believe there was any possibility that it was actually maybe kind of like curious about you as well? I mean, I, I'm sure the look of it was intimidating yourself, but due to the size and just the you know the the expression on the face it had. So, but perhaps it was actually just a a curious, gentle giant, perhaps just kind of like the curious uh, subjects that we encountered back, you know, yeah. you know, May, you know, fourteen. I mean, that's a very good possibility that it that it was maybe just curious about me, but the look on his face and my face was almost exactly the same. How mm. how far away how far away were you again? Uh, twenty four feet. Could you twenty four feet? Awesome. No, I could not smell a thing. Yeah, that's one of the things that I've heard in the past week from a few people I've talked to that have witnessed and in the kind of the same area that they didn't smell either and they were maybe 20 feet 25 feet away as it crossed the road and they were walking about the same time May June yeah mm. wow. now with you you were surrounded by I mean what I mean I know the subject is was it was in between like an opening of the laurel uh, the laurel brush. Now, was there a lot of other laurel around you? It was, all right, I'll put it to you this way. You know how you know how you got you got you know, like a uh, like a four foot trail, all right? I'm gonna yeah. put this in mind. You got a four foot trail. On the left side, you've got a bank with a drop off to the creek. That's a pretty wide creek. Uh, on the right, two feet off the trail, is a wall of thicket. All the way, hmm. and every now and then you'll come up in a little spot that might have a little bit of opening, a little bit further back from you, and then it comes back to the trail and just goes in and out with these lures, just like a just like a snake. Hmm. And in a couple parts of it, the lure was on both sides of me. And then when I got to the end of that row of double clove, what I call it, right there at the end of the row, and I could see this water over here. 
and over here was the big, you know, you know, five foot opening between laurels. And right, it looked like to me, like it was a rolling hill that came up and went over to where I was. But on the other side of that is where this figure, where, where this massive bundle of hair and open eyes and open mouth, you know, was just staring at me. And mm. that came, and the, the snap and the everything I heard before was just right off from that same area, maybe you know, fifteen. 15, 20 yards. Oh, you man. said you said you were uh, disoriented. Was that from the shock of actually seeing something? Actually, actually seeing it because I never would expect to see one in the daytime. Yeah. I figure it would be yeah. like in, like in 2014. It would be dark. You see the high shine. You possibly <laughs> if you can keep your concentration, you might have that on the infrared or the night vision goggle, which mm. I had the camera right in my hand. And what did I, I do? I know. Tracy, it was like me, yeah. <laughs> That's like, yeah, when we shared our encounter together, that was the same situation. I had mine with me too, but we're, it, with the excitement of everything going on, you know, it's like I tell people, I said, you can watch Cliff Stanley's video that I didn't know he was recording the whole situation, which was awesome, but it was disappointing that we didn't pick them up on the film, even though with all the light shining at them, that we we saw what we were seeing, but the camera didn't pick nothing up, which was a big disappointment, but our, our our actions and behaviors were pretty obvious. Yeah. I mean, we had fun with it. We were actually being silly. I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't think any other anyone else would be acting that way. I mean, I keep thinking back on that situation. I mean, I know I think Kimmy Kimmy was a little nervous, but overall, I think even Elijah was kind of excited about it. <laughs> I mean, because there was six of us all together in a little group, you know, and yeah. I don't know, it was very exciting. <laughs> well, my boy, he, you know, he he always talks about how tense he got down at the lake and by the time he got up there to where we had the encounter you know, from down from the Johnny houses yeah and we got down there he said he felt like it just loosened up for just that flat you know six minutes that we were looking at this he didn't feel no pain at all he was just like you know yeah. looking at these <laughs> eyes you know, all the pain went away and then as soon as we got to walk again he said I thought you wanted to carry me back to the camp <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> yeah, poor Elijah. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's funny because you know after we were starting to walk away, when we got out, uh, you know, past the Johnny house there, you know, we kept hearing the movement a little bit on, you know, in the woods, like they were either paralleling us or they were working their way back into the, you know, towards the ridge. But, um, you know, I can still recall the way I felt too, even though we were, you know, after we had their encounter. Actually, I was actually feeling like really relaxed and calm, you know. You felt great. I don't know. I didn't, yeah, I, it's weird. But <laughs> now, I don't know if you ever heard me talk about uh, the. I've shared it quite a few times before. Even though, I, all right, there was one time I was at the camp, the um, one of the camp spots right outside of the entrance of the lake. Um, it's one spot I camped there a lot on my own, and there was one time I was there. It was about 9:30 at night, I mean between 9:30 and 10 o'clock. But um, I walked out from camp to the main road. I had a spotlight in my hand, but the spotlight was not turned on. I walked out. I walked to the middle of the road, and you know, while it was pure dark, and then all of a sudden I decided to turn my my uh, spotlight on and start shining in the woods. And keep in mind, this is the same set of woods where we had our encounter. Mm. And because uh, I'm just around the corner from it right there, and I shine my light on, and immediately I had a deer run off over to my left, but now over to my right, you could hear how close the subject was. It was within had it been about at least 20 feet inside the tree line. I mean, without doubt, it was a two, it was a bipedal, very large, heavy subject that was walking away. You could hear the flat steps as it thumped and crashed on every step, step it took. And it wasn't a fast run, uh, walk, but it wasn't a slow walk either. It was like a steady walk. Like it was trying to get away and not be seen. Even though I did not see nothing. But with hearing how heavy that was, I mean, there was no mistaking that it was a very large, heavy subject in there. It was not a bear. The bears were, you know, I, I bear would have either made a noise or ran off a little faster. Um... <laughs> but it had me walking backwards back to camp, you know, and I grab and I had my keys hooked to my belt, 
you know, I was getting the the lock button, the uh, my little control to get ready to unlock my blazer to get jump back in my blazer if I had to. <laughs> but um, I you know because I was by myself, I didn't have nothing on me. I was unarmed. I had a Bowie knife. That wasn't gonna do nothing. <laughs> but um, yeah, I was a little nervous that night because I was by myself and not seeing what was in the woods. But I knew it was very large and heavy, you know. <laughs> so, but yeah, those woods. Ever since they are encountered, I mean, I've always there's a lot of activity that's been taking place still in those, in that same area. Uh, wow. You could ask Fred Candy. Uh, Fred Candy and I both experienced vocalizations out of there, and you know, wood knocks, everything. You know, I've actually had a small rock thrown at me one time during the daytime from behind. It caught me off guard, but <laughs> but um, it was very exciting. Hopefully, we can, you know you can get back up there and we can do some more looking around there. But. Um, but yeah, back to your encounter. Uh, I, I know I get inside when it comes to Sasquatch encounters and activity. I just get exciting. I can go on and on and on. <laughs> but um, so now I know you were talking about Dennis Taylor uh, returning to the area. Have you been back to the area? No, I have not. Oh, you have not. I have not. Now, now would you go back to that area? Yes, with enough people, I might. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I mean, well, I'll tell you what. I, I'll one weekend when you're off of work because I'm off every weekend. So we'll plan some. We'll plan a weekend. You know, I'll get down there, and uh, oh, if you, I mean, if you're willing to do this, I mean, I, I would love to come down there, spend the day out there, kind of, kind of scout the area out a little bit. You know, I'm sure we get Tony. Tony ain't far from there, is he? Tony, Tony Lester. If he's he's just down the road, what seventy miles or so? Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get the guys together, the local guys together, and we uh, head on out there. So, <laughs> so I'll take a but, bus. Um, yeah, <laughs> I take a bus. I'll take a bus. By the way, <laughs> by the way, those who don't know who that is, that's Cheryl Glenn's wife. <laughs> well, anyway. I want to listen to Tracy's story. Jeez, I've been waiting oh, for it. Let's see. Uh, <laughs> okay, well, I'm glad. I'm surprised you're still up right now, Cheryl. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna be but, tired well, in the morning. <laughs> yeah. Well, since you're on, I know you. You always have questions. Do you have any questions for Tracy? Just give me time. <laughs> okay. Uh, anyone else on the panel got any other questions for Tracy in regards to this? Hey, Tracy. I apologize. What? I don't know what want to know the area, but what general vicinity did did this happen again? Well, you'll probably know by the by the description. Uh, it's the uh, last. It's three miles from West Virginia border, from the new, all, off the New River by a mile. Uh, gotcha. You know what you know, county I'm talking about? Oh yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, it's one county that's had probably. Uh, I think it's three BFRO reports, mm -hmm. and uh, I myself, you know, have got seven from the area. Uh, that's how upper dense forested it is, and how often they're seen over the last thirty years, you know, or heard over the last thirty years they've been seen and heard, you know, that many times. Have Have you heard any of them when when they vocalized it sound? Because what we heard the the few that we've heard sound like a what I've told the panel here an Indian yell, almost like a person yelling. Uh, well, I, I've got uh, you remember the video that I, I mean, you remember the uh, audio I played at the uh, town hall meeting, Daniel? Uh yes, yes, I believe so. But, Ah, it was kind of loud, and it was pretty close. But there's somebody that has told me before that that sounds like an Indian war yell. That's what it sounds. Yeah, that's what ours sound like. That's what, that's what it sounds like on the recorder. And this is near a cave, probably not even four miles from the house here. That's amazing. Uh, this cr this uh, cricket runs through. With County has the big mountain in with in in this area, mm -hmm. and the other side is the, the what people call uh, Sasquatch Highway, which has got the <laughs> Appalachian Trail on it. So you know, 
I mean, there's two big mountains, one creek runs between them, and it's the shortest distance from one mountain to the other. Hmm. And okay. Cave is right smack in the middle of all of it. And this guy, you know, uh, uh, Michael Michael Gilman is his uh, his property, and uh, we named it uh, Captain's Field after his uh, great grandfather. He was a captain in the Civil War. Great great grandfather. <laughs> so many followers back. You know, he was a captain in, in the, the war and the Civil War and all that stuff. So that's why we na named it over after him because that was his property. They were the first settlers here in the county. Cool. And they got a lot of history of uh, long hunting, you know, long hunters, and you know, uh, you know, I don't know if y'all have ever heard the Crackers Next Story. Yep. Crackers jo Next Story. Joshua uh, Cracker. Yep. Uh, uh, <laughs> a friend of mine, Dennis Taylor. He, uh, we were. I was sitting in Crackers Neck and didn't even know it because yeah. it's not on the map. <laughs> you know. That's it. So it's right. like the locals know where it is, but nobody else does. Right. Yeah, so, uh, um, real quick, I do want to make a, a mention. Uh, we have a large number of viewers. Uh, anyone viewing, if you got questions for Tracy Arnold or anything that we're discussing, uh, you got we got the live chat. It's open. Uh, some, if you're new to the podcast viewing, um, the live chat is right below where you're viewing. So, uh, feel free to ask Tracy a question. Tracy, um, I got one. For, I got one for Tracy. Go ahead. I know you got a lot of them. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Remember that? Tracy. All right, Tracy. Here's my question. When you saw, was you just just kind of like lollygagging down through the woods, and he just like stood up, and you just and y'all locked eyes at the same time, or? Was it he jumped up and seen you, or you seen him before he stood up, or while he was standing up? I, I seriously believe that, you know, I was just, you know, walking through there. I wasn't even thinking of Sasquatch. Right. I was thinking of this picture of this waterfall to get on nature walk. And, you know, as far as the encounter, I just ask. Uh, or if it was just in shock the same way I was. Uh, it's just a, it's a mind boggling thing to think that there's, you know, there's something out there that looks totally different than what you see on pictures, movies, or anything else. I mean, some. I went to you know Miss uh, Miss Alex uh, drew that sketch for me, and she had done hundreds of sketches for everybody else, and she pinpointed exactly what I saw. Besides, you know, the mouth was a lot wider open and no teeth. Uh huh. Uh -huh. Because it, was, it was like it was like I was. It was scary. You know, I believe it was scared, and it got busted, the same as I did. Oh. Oh, yeah, I'm busted. You know, I'm standing here looking at a squash, and this thing could take two steps, and I could be out of here. Yeah, now I'll I tell you, I've seen the drawing that you, uh, that the guy did. I've seen in Highland County. I've seen squash. I've seen one squash, two squashes over there. It looks exactly identical to the one you have, the one you saw. And it's and, funny that Fred actually brought that up because I was going to ask you: Do you have that drawing on anywhere where I could? Uh, Grab it and post it and share it with everybody right now. Tell you what, I, mean. I, I, I can go right to it here. I got my All phone. Right. <laughs> okay, uh, put it in my Facebook Messenger and uh, I will screen share. Okay. He's gonna screen. He's gonna screen share. Uh, I got screen. <laughs> he had a guy. Okay. I, oh, are you? Because if you have, or if you have it on, uh, hold on. Do you have it in the New River uh, Bigfoot group anywhere? Uh, which I think you do. I've got both, I believe. No, wait a minute. Maybe I. This sounds much. I know you use it as your Twitter. Yes, I'm on Twitter. Uh, profile. Right but uh. And all of a sudden, it's much to the right of him or left of him, and they call each other back at the same time. Uh, let me see. Let me see. Oh. Yeah, he was terrified. He wouldn't go back in the woods for two months. 
Uh, hold on, give me a second here. I'm trying to huh? find my list of groups here. I'm drawing. And the guy who drew it is is he's one hell of a good artist. I mean, because it looks identical. I got it. Right. Okay, are you able to send it to my uh, my messenger? Yep, hang on just one second, and I'll get it to you then. Awesome, and then I'll go ahead and click on it and let everyone view it. And for those viewing, uh, this sketch drawing um, is exactly what Tracy said he saw. And uh, I'm excited to share it. It's a great drawing. Uh, the, the work is pretty well. Now, who, who again did the sketching, uh, sketch drawing for you? I'm trying to think of her whole name, but uh, it's Alex. Uh, hang on. Can't pop and do that too. He lives down in Whitfield. He lives in Ohio. He lives in Maine. Daniel lives in Kamal. Ah, there you go. All right. Yeah, the name is actually on the picture. As soon as I send it to you, I'll get it. Alex Evans. Okay, there it is, right there. Alex Evans. All right. Okay, give me a second. I'm about to screen share. I got it. And I'll go ahead. Uh, once I screen share, I'm going to present it to the whole uh, screen here. So give me a second. That's it. And here we go, right here, everyone. This is uh, exactly what Tracy saw right here. Oh, look. <laughs> Seeing it on there, give me a right there. <laughs> hey, Tr <laughs> hey, hey, Tracy. Yeah, man. When she drew the eyes, was that, is that what his eyes look like? Yeah. When y'all locked eyes? Yeah. <laughs> because that right there is a look of shock. Like, ooh, I've been busted. His eyes well, got big. I do. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> but, you, know, the, you can see the out, the, the lining ring around his eye, the white. That was yeah. very, very slim to mine. Yeah, and exactly what you described, with the hair on the face being short, that's exactly what I'm seeing in the sketching right here, too. Yeah, face short, like a beard. Yeah. Like my beard is right there. Yeah, because all the ones that I've seen, they had that very, very slight white around them, and the rest of it was almost blackish brown, the color of the eye. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and this one here's got hair on his face, and uh, the ones that I got, I got two groups. I got one group that does have hair on the face just like this one, and they got another group that doesn't. Wow. Now the now the thing to me is, are they the same species of squatches? Are they relative? Because you got some with them hair on their face and some without hair on their face. That's the question. Hmm. Hmm. Because, and, all, and because a, lot, a lot of people say they've got a cone, you know, like a football cone on their head. Well, if you yeah, look I, at them, I did not see <clears> that. <throat> but I only seen from the front view, and his head was level pretty much with mine. So I mean, I could not see a cone. Well, I but got a picture of a juvie. It may be the ones that have the cone level that go back like that, though. Yeah, because there's there like two different types of cones. Yeah, because I got I got pictures of juvies. I got one, two, just that you can see the coned head, and then I got one peeking between uh, two, <clears throat> between two trees, looking at me, and he doesn't have a cone. Yeah. Even the one I overzoomed on doesn't have a cone. No, that's the weird thing. I mean, you know, but you know, you look at this, and you know, I mean, I hear primate, and I hear human. I do see, you know, a lot of human. Characteristics, but, uh -huh. I do, but I do see a lot of you know other things that say that it's not human. I'm thinking it may be its own. I think it's its own species. I really do. I mean, because that because you know, being one face to face, I mean, it's totally different being in the dark and seeing one. How'd you like to have one at five feet in front of you? <laughs> well, uh, I'll just put it this way. You wouldn't have seen a video of me leaving. <laughs> I'd have probably just died. Well, well, the thing with me was I couldn't move my feet. I could not move my feet. All I could do was just stand there and just turn my head and say, this is going to hurt. 
but you know yeah. he, he, he he didn't do anything. Yeah. That's the weird thing. Yeah. So, yeah. Sometimes, uh, you know, I've heard on a number of occasions that you're talking about the cone on your head, and that's reported with a lot of sightings. Uh, the way a lot of people uh, describe their, uh, you know, the subjects that they have with their uh, descriptions, um, which you know, I, that's also known as the uh, possible sagittal, uh, the sagittal. Am I saying it right? Crest. Crest. Uh, which is, which is related to uh, like what a lot of you know primates uh, have or what they said they uh, they called it on the Patterson footage uh, Sasquatch on Patty because you know if you, they had that slanted slope to the head mm -hmm. kind of like that cone like you were just describing uh, just looking at this here it almost looks like it had that at the same time it looks rounded but if I was to look at this from the side yeah would the head kind of slant upward if I'm if I was looking at this on the side yeah yeah it, does, it looks rounded here but so, almost, I'm sorry, go me, ahead. It, it, well, I'm just going to, you know, to me, uh, it <laughs> looks almost a uh, uh, mix between a, a monkey and a human, almost a Neanderthal, Neanderthal nose with the uh -huh. thin lips, not much of a jutting chin, but definitely in the nose. Um, so I could see where some people think, you know, it's a very human-like creature. Yeah, so you're talking about between uh, Cro-Magnum and Neanderthals. Something like that, yeah. Right, right there, right, right on the border. Right. That's what that's that's one theory that I have. I, I, that's where I think it come from in that period right there. You know, with but, the monkey, I mean, there, but see, you have there's no ears, or the ears are not prominent. No, um, they got they got ears. Right, right, but they're not. You know, like how small compared to how big the head is. You know, so their their ears probably are. You know, finite hearing. That's you know, that's one of the, the things that I think that their hear hearing is superb. I mean, it oh, has they to can be. they can hear you when you if he's a mile back in the woods, he'll hear you walking through there. He'll sense you. They they know you're in the woods before you do. Well, I guarantee. Yeah, it. Paul. Yeah, now talking about the head, the pointed head. Uh, Paul Halsley uh, made a comment saying he's never seen a pointed head in Alabama. Yeah, I think maybe in different different parts of the, the country, in different states, perhaps, you know, it, it's just like people and other animals. There's no two of the same. Um, right. I mean, I think, you know, in different regions, they, they look different or appear different. Um, just like our, like apes, you got chimpanzees and gorillas. They're totally different. Uh, you know, they're all in the ape family, but they're totally different. So I think it's the same, <clears throat> just like all of us on the panel here. I mean... And I mean, we're all people, and we, but we look different, you know. So, it, well, I think, yeah, I think depends. You got yeah, different groups and clans, and different families, and. <laughs> well, there's one thing you got to agree on. I'm sorry. Everything. There's one thing we all got to agree on. All right, all the ones I've seen, everything a male's got, they got. Everything a female got, they got. Identical. The hands are the, the only thing different in the hand is besides their being massive is their thumbs are down a little lower than ours. But they walk like us. I mean, you know, well, you know, it's basically from what I've seen, they're they're identical. They're, they they're a human that's got long legs. They do everything we do, but they do it differently in the woods. They're intelligent. They're extremely fast, and I've seen one run and extremely freaking fast, and everything. Because the one that stepped out in front of me in uh, back in October, about two years ago, he ran. He ran mm, probably about a hundred yards, maybe two hundred yards, just give or take, in about five or six seconds. Boom, he was up there. He stopped. Mm. Turned his whole upper half of the body, looked at me, and then I just walked off. Extremely hey, Tracy, fast. Tracy, how many how many sightings have you had uh, besides the one that was up close? Uh, well, I can tell you this: we the one back in the May uh, ECBRO event we had. It was a nighttime. Uh, there was uh, the rock got thrown at us. We never seen it, but we had the rock thrown at us from about 25, 30 yards away from us. That was our very first encounter. Nine and a quarter pound rock been chucked 
you know, get his waves up through the trees and down behind our van. Uh, and there was one morning I, I did see something, but I could not rule out a bear because it was on all fours. But it was really, really fast. So, I mean, I, I, it might have been a squash, but I'm thinking, you know, a lot more along the bear. You know, I'm not going to say, sit here and be Matt Money Maker and say, well, that's a squatch. Right, right. I've got more more audio than I have sightings. Cool. Uh, And, you know, the footprints that I found are more than I've had any kind of encounter. You know, I've seen the 32 footprint. Greg gave me the cash for the last five that I found, and I've cashed for the fourth one. Yeah. All right. Now, now, Tracy, I want want to hear your experience from up there at Elkhorn Lake that night that y'all got eyeballs on that family group well it was a it was a good experience uh it wasn't in the daytime i didn't see what i was supposed to be seeing <laughs> well i know that i wasn't had my last encounter <laughs> no basically what i'm saying is all right, all right you and you and uh your son was down at the uh more toward the lake area right oh uh, Second, yeah, uh, he's talking about before we had the encounter, like when we were spread around the lake. Yeah, we tell us about what. Yeah, we were at the second or third dock. Okay, y'all was at the uh, y'all was on the handicap dock. Yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. Now, now I was at now I was at the third one when I looked up at Ridge and saw one with red eyes. That's exactly what we had. That's what exactly what we saw. The red eyes. Because they, I. These things were more massive than the ones that on this on this one here that we're looking at. Yeah, about like, big as a about big as a golf ball. About big as a they, golf ball. They were about like that. Yeah, yeah. a little bit bigger than a golf ball. Yeah, because the, they had a glow to them that may have magnified their size. Yeah. When they went blink, blink, gone, <laughs> they were yeah. headed toward you know down to the other side where Kimmy and Darren was at. I mean, uh-huh. that's all I seen was blink. Yeah, because I had because I had a boy I had a, bo- a boy with me that night we was up there, and and I mean he was a mouthy he was a cocky little boy I mean he always smart mouthing you, he just all of a sudden he clammed up, folded his arms took his head looked down I mean he just went dead silent, I said what's wrong he said up on the hill I said what about it he said look on the hill, that's where I seen him, and everything so so I know where you come from at that point but I want to hear what happened to you and your son. We, uh, right there when Daniel said, hey, y'all, come check this out. When Daniel saw that juvie. You're right. Uh, well, when, when Daniel seen the eye shine, he didn't know what it was either because, you know, he kept, you know, come here, come on, look at this, look at this, look at this, we got an eye shine. I'm like, and I ran up there real quick. <laughs> first thing that hits our minds is, okay, uh, we're looking at a mountain lion or something. That's yeah, fire. that's what, exactly what I thought at first. Is that a mountain lion? Is that a mountain lion? Because keep in mind, remember, we didn't realize that they were sitting uh, first at first subject, which we 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 uh, concluded that it was a juvenile, but we didn't also know that that ground sloped the way down about four or five feet as I mean, well. I told you like, that's what they were going to be at. <laughs> it, goes, it goes down, you know, three or four feet like this, levels off, and then it slopes off to the water. Yeah. And this thing was what? What? What would you say, Daniel? About twenty yards from us, if that? At least, at least a minimum, a minimum of twenty yards. Yeah. Minimum of twenty yards, and you know, all at once, I mean, just you know, we're all standing there looking at it. Uh, Darren's going down a little further. I can't see nothing at that time because he goes across this log and stands on top of. I'm looking around this way, and then it finally moves up a little ways. Remember that we kind of lose it right here. At the first part, and then it, it moves up. I told you that's where they were going to be at. <laughs> well, I'm glad. I tell you, what, I'm glad that y'all seen them, because y'all are probably the, besides me, the second group of people who's ever seen them. No one else has ever seen them. Now I've had reports from oh, uh, one gentleman. He no longer works with me, but. Uh, Two years ago, he shared he shared his sighting in that same area. Well, not where we had our encounter, but a couple, uh, about a couple miles up the road, uh, where he had a sighting of a. He said it was about six foot tall, two feet. Uh, it was on two feet, and it was pretty pretty hairy. He said it was like a dark brown, 
and it was came across the road, stopped for a split second to look to slightly look towards him, and went across the road. And he said it probably cleared that creek, well, actually the river. You know, the river varies in size in certain areas around there. Some of it's shallow. He said he made it across that river in two steps. So, <coughs> but uh, I mean, and it was only six. It was only he said he estimated only six foot tall too. So. Which is pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah, that, that yeah, that river is considered a creek, but I've seen at times where I wouldn't even think about crossing that thing because the way the, yeah. water, the way the watershed is up there and everything. Yeah. Um. See, I'm looking at some comments here. Um. Uh, one question: If if you shoot and kill one, can you be charged with murder? Well, <laughs> that's in some states, yes. <laughs> yes. But uh. Um, because it is a declared a uh, endangered. Well, I don't know. The, there is laws against killing a Sasquatch in a couple different states, but uh. Well, isn't there laws of shooting in about anything that's out of hunting season? Well, for state, one thing, yeah. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Now, what what I've read is um from uh, Oregon and Washington State saying. Uh, if you shoot a, I think it's here in Virginia too. I'm not really sure, but I think I read it somewhere or heard it somewhere. It said if you shoot a Sasquatch and they find human DNA in that blood, you will be charged with first degree murder or a homicide, more or less terms. Hmm. Now, in the state of New York, Whitehall, New York, they have that law established. Oh, uh, it might it might have been where I heard from. No, yeah. I think, uh, Whitehall. Yeah, uh, I think. Uh, what was it, uh, Washington State or Oregon, one of the two, has a law that you cannot harass a Sasquatch after 10 o'clock at night. That's a good law. I think that's what we need to get around That's here. a great law. <laughs> yeah, because the thing about it is, you're sitting there at the camp, they're harassing you. Yeah, so you can't, <laughs> you can't get back there. <laughs> yeah, uh, Paul Holsey just showed us uh, a drawing of his. Uh, would you guys like me to share that? Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. All right. All right. Give me a second. Let me go find Paul's. Uh, I'm looking at it through my phone. So hold on. I think I think I've seen the one you're talking about, Daniel. I'll yeah. know. I'll know when you show it. Uh, right here. Hold on. Uh, let it pop up first. Hold on. Uh, let me get rid of these. Do, 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 do. I like how I, I like how a phone dings and we all go. Yeah. I'm looking at you. <laughs> I'm looking at mine when somebody else is good. Uh, now where's Paul at? I mean, I he's like in Al he, He's a, he's uh he's in Alabama. He's um he kind of backed off after after uh, what happened to me, him, and about six other people. Right. Well, yeah, check it this out. is up. This is Paul's right here, Paul Halsey. Thank you for sharing, Paul. Look at there. Look at the same. The nose and and the the, the mm -hmm. mouth is almost exactly the same. I mean, the lower lip might be a little bit different, but look at the prominent features: the roundness of the head, small ears. If yeah, uh, if I could put this, compare this next to what Tracy just uh, had. I can't even see it. You, you see the similarities? I'm not even seeing it. Oh, well. it oh you're not. Does uh, Tracy know this guy? You know Paul Halsey, uh, Tracy? I remember, I remember him being on the shows before any of before I got on any of them. I used yeah. to watch. Yeah, that was All back right. before that was that was back before you started getting on there, uh, Daniel. Yeah. Tracy, you say you're not seeing what's on the screen right now? Uh -huh. Oh, man. Mm. I got a screen share presenting it to everybody. I'll be uh -huh. There he is. Uh, Oh, you see it now? <laughs> now, what do you think? I mean, looking oh, looking at this picture here, Tracy, and comparing it to yours, you see, I mean, I almost see some similarities. I mean, of course, in your picture, the eye is a little bit more rounded. That is. This drawing here is uh, the only difference I see between Tracy's picture and this picture here is the artist. Went in, went a little more into detail than what you, what they did with the uh, with the uh, Tracy's. That's the only difference I see. The only thing different yeah. tra Tracy's yeah. the, the eyes on yours and the eyes on this one is the uh, the eyes are a little more 
you know, kind of, not round, round, but kind of like a human type roundness, you know, to yeah. a point. Look there, Fred, above the nose. It looks like maybe it might have been cut horizontally. Uh, or, I mean, maybe that's just me seeing that. Where at? Right above the nose where it looks like there's four little tufts of hair. Well, now, keep in mind, this this is only a sketch drawing. True, I mean, true. Yeah. 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 Hmm. That's, that's nice. Now, hold on. I'm going to try to share another picture. Uh, Paul posted another one. It's a full body picture drawing. Uh, just looking for my phone, it looks pretty interesting. Now, uh, Paul Halsley was the guy who was on uh, Finding Bigfoot, yeah. who's the one that got the, uh, and actually the, ther the people who own Thermo got in touch with Paul about this. Because uh, Paul, they got out of the pickup truck, and Paul turned around and turned his Thermo on, and he thought, honestly, that one of the guys in the truck with him was back behind the truck you know, like taking a whiz or something like that. <laughs> and he said, where are you guys at? And they said, we're on the driver's side of the truck. <laughs> but he didn't say nothing to the guys. He said, oh, okay. He didn't tell them to the next day. All right, here we go right here. And Paul uh, also makes a comment. He states, uh, <laughs> this, was, this was based from an encounter in the state of Mississippi. So, are you guys seeing this one here? Yeah, I'm seeing it. It's kind of freaky right. looking. He's crouched. <laughs> the squatch is crouched. Yeah, almost. Yeah, kind of like almost a crawl, a crawl or something there. Yeah. That's funny that you know the way this thing is right here. But the fact of it is, I can always <laughs> see the one that I saw from the mid torso up, and didn't even see the hands. I mean, this it was over behind that knoll. And mm -hmm. wow. one arm one arm was kinda like kicked out to the side like <laughs> this <and> down. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Like a you know, how something gets over and gets to a stance. I mean, that right there is uh that's totally honest. Yeah. And let's see what else we got. Uh this guy's arm. <laughs> this guy's Paul, arm. Said, Paul said, Yeah, I crapped my pants almost. L well, let's see. Uh, all right, let me go find some here. Uh, wow. Uh, hold on, Leo Page. Let me get back to the comments. Uh, hold on, Leo Page, making comments uh, because I'm I'm looking through my phone. I'm just kind of jumping back and forth from Facebook to. Hold on, I'll pull it up here in just a second. Uh, my phone's slow right now. Uh, <laughs> I'll, be right, uh, I'll be right back. <sighs> <laughs> Lil P, I'm not seeing nothing. Uh, oh, I thought she was making comments in here. I don't see nothing from Lil P. Uh, hmm. Oh, um. Yeah, I definitely want to get down there. I I want to plan. Some time to get down there. I know Sam. Uh, Sam invited me and Fred to come down to his area, which is I, I really definitely want to check out his area as well. He's a little further south from you, but uh, it would definitely have to be a you know a good long weekend. Uh, but uh, uh, hold on, let me see. All right, hold on, Lil. I'll check again. I I try to refresh it. Uh, it's, after refreshing, because I know it, this was doing it. Uh, it was doing it to me yesterday. I kept refreshing it, and it took me a while to see some of the comments. Uh, maybe it'll show up now. Uh, Lael, um I'm not seeing anything by Lail on the live chat. I see uh, Brooklyn, New York, Paranormal several times. I see Steve Peck. 
and then Paul Halsley. And they're the only ones that's actually commented here. Uh, 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 uh. All right. Okay. Um. Hey, Glenn or Sam. Do you guys have any questions or anything you want to ask uh, Tracy? No, I mean, I've looked and watching his videos all kind of uh, while you guys have been talking here. It's pretty amazing stuff. Looks like our area too, Tracy. You know, I, I think that the whole area up and down through Virginia um, all has somewhat of the same type of nature but I think in some areas that it's a little bit different than other areas is that about like what you encounter up your way yep it sure is it sure is uh, you get different reports from different people seeing the different types of uh, Sasquatch and different behavior too uh, and different ones that come around the area uh, and uh, like the footprints you, you just shot with me on uh, Messenger, uh, yes, that's very similar to what I have found here. Uh, I get to looking at one of the, the, the one cast that I do have, and I got to looking at the Patterson, Pat, the Patty print, the Patterson Gemma, has that same curvature, just like your heel on the back of this one. Mm -hmm. uh, that that heel is curvature. There was no gap between that curb and the in the front of the foot. Mm -hmm. It's like a flat going on thing to the to the toes. There was no dip, no arch, nothing. I'm seeing the same thing in yours that I see in mine. Jeez. So. Mm -hmm. Now, as far as different 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 species of uh, Sasquatch, yes, I believe there is. Uh, for one being, there's uh, uh, several been seen in one area that are you know eight to ten feet tall, more higher, and then there's others have been seen from seven and a half, you know six six and a half to seven and a half foot tall to eight foot tall, and they're a little bit shabbier, uh, not as not as broad as that one that I saw. Uh, and, and they've got the same characteristics, but they're not. Their sizes are different and very, you know, in different hair lengths. Uh, uh, I think it has something to do with genetics uh, between different, you know, different, uh, different types. Uh, let's see. I'm checking something out here. Hold on. Yeah, because I got uh, I got black ones, reddish brown ones. Brown ones, cinnamon blonde, reddish blonde. They got all sorts of colors. But their eyeballs are the exact same color in the daytime. During the, uh, during the day, their eyes are a real dark brown, almost a black color. That eye shine that you saw, uh, Tracy, was it yellow? Red? What? I mean, what? What? What color well, was it? On the, the first, the first set we saw that particular night was red. Red. Was glowing, glowing red, and you know, it, I mean, just the way your your eyes focus on it, I think it changes during during the time of the cycle of looking around. It kind of changes, glowing to to orange to to red, kind of like back and forth like that. When it when it went to blink, when it got shallower. It was more of a, a darker red. Hmm. I mean, I don't know. It just seemed like it was illuminating. You know, boom. You know, it was there. But as far as you know, the, the other encounter, man, you could vouch for this. I mean, green glowing eyes uh, and just car lights looking at you. <laughs> I mean, pretty much like a you're shining the light and it's shining right back at you through the side. I just and it looked like they were firing right through me. Yeah. All right, Tracy. Do you think? Do you think when they change the color of their eyes that they're? Uh, do you think it's um, um, in the, the mood they're in? Like if they're mad or if they're curious, you know, each time like if they're curious, their eyes are a certain color. If they're mad, their eyes are a certain color. Mm -hmm. Or if they're content, their eyes are a different color. 
I, I'm not sure about that breed. I think it may have something to do with the type of light. Oh, I could. On it. I, uh, I can make a statement on that as far as uh, that is a true statement with bear brown bears. Um, if they have aggravation or basically if they're pissed off, uh, bears' eyes will actually appear red uh, for a number of four hours till they calm down. Well, um, so <laughs> hey, well, I don't tell you this: yeah. you weren't the ones that peed them off. So they came by, uh, Fred, and they came behind. They came right up beside Daniel and Cliff. So they must have done something to take it out. Because <laughs> the way we're going was fishing. <laughs> no, we didn't fish. Yeah. Hey, all we were doing, I had my parable, Mike, and, you know, Cliff was with me. When I started hearing movement, that's when I radioed down to you. And then I say, hey, we got movement up on the ridge behind us here. <laughs> Yeah. And I don't know. I don't know if that was before. I can't remember if it was before or after Kimmy gave off her vocalization. That, was that we got a response off. Uh, yeah. That was after. That was after the after the vocalization. Yeah. yeah. So we, we sat there about you know, 10, 15 minutes, and then y'all started hearing it. Uh, yeah. Something walking, y'all could hear it crashing through the, the leaves and breaking branches. Well, and after y'all heard it go go by y'all. Uh, I heard uh, you come over radio and said, Tracy, I, I believe it's headed y'all's way. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then Elijah, you know, he automatically turns his back toward the fishing pole and starts looking up on the hill. And, you know, I'm sitting there <laughs> kind of panning up. I got night vision goggles, right? And I got my goggle up looking and I hear it and I don't see it. So I pull it down. And then when we see the, the eye shine, I pull it back up and Guess what happens? It snows really bad in the night vision goggles. I pull it down and it starts working again. So you back up. Yeah. It stops working. Uh -huh. Well, I'll tell, like what, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'm glad I'm not the only one that knows that family group's up there because uh, when I was up there with Daniel, when we got the uh, vocalizations come back, as uh, he went up one way, and I followed the creek around, and you could see where they come down off that back ridge over. Like where you take and go in down toward them piers, if you go back behind the Johnny house there where them uh, where that stream is, and you follow it up, it'll take you. You'll see a trail that cuts off and goes up that ridge and goes over to the back there. I think there's a cave system back there on that back ridge somewhere. Yeah. Because yeah, they, I believe that's a very possible. Yeah, because they, because they're, they're always like the the night I was up there with a bunch of other people. Right across the road, matter of fact, it was over right behind where Daniel Camp's at. I heard three big old whoops from a young one. And I told the people, I said, that's a squatch. Yeah. They come up with every scenario except the truth. Even the game warden told them there was no one was up there. You know, but when Daniel went up there, I said, you know, this is where they're going to be at and everything. And I'm glad that y'all seen the whole family group. It might, it might it might have been one or two hanging back, yeah, as guards or something like that. But 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 to have that one right there, right there, right looking at you. Uh, uh, Fred, your Fred, your audio is breaking up. Okay, how about hey, that? Hey Tracy, have you um, or Fred? Uh, have, I have think you, Fred froze. Have you guys huh? have, have you guys what? ever heard any? Um, but not whoops or yells, but any type of um, I don't know communication between yeah, one I've heard and another. Them. Yeah, I've heard them chatter. So well, when you when you hear them, they sound it sounds like you hear people in the woods, but you're just far enough away where you can't understand them. That's what my wife heard that night. Yeah. On that audio, I mean, she states it clearly. It sounds like people are talking in the woods. Yeah. You know, so, I'm asking these questions kind of confirm what I'm. Yeah, heard, cause, what we heard, you know. Yeah, because when I took Daniel and uh, and uh, another person up there to the birthing beds, uh, you could you could plainly hear chattering right on the other side of the ridge from us, but it was just just loud enough to where you can, you know, like, hey, there's someone over talking, you know, and that's what they do. I've had three different people in the woods with me, and every all three of them has confirmed the same thing. They, I said, "What do you hear?" I'm hearing it before they do, and they're like, "I hear people talk." I said, "Really? Where?" He said, "Over there." I said, "What sound like?" He said, "I don't know. I can't quite understand what they're saying." 
I said, is it chattering? Yeah, it's chattering. That's what they do. What about you, Trace? Uh, yes, I have. I've heard of the, you know, I've heard of this myself in the woods, too. I could, you know, we go out and do a, a pop, you know, real loud, wouldn't I? And then, you know, two or three minutes later, it might take a little time, but you'll hear, pow, pow, and on the other ridge, pow, in between these two, you know, mm. it'd be like we'd kick something off that, you know, we wouldn't have heard if we would just sit out there and the woods not doing enough. Right. But, you know, so, I, so you you yeah, do a lot of wood knocks. I used to be against the wood knocks and doing the whoops and everything else. So, you, know, you know, the wood the knocks is what I get most of my responses on. Hmm. Have to try that. I don't do many wood knocks. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. Out of thirty times of going out in the woods, you know, you only get like six things that happen. Right. Then you go and you don't just sit there. Yeah. Six things out of thirty. 30 times. Yeah. And you try yeah. something different and start, you know, playing with lights out in the woods and stuff like that and stuff starts coming in and, you know, you start drawing stuff in, especially when you go to one particular area that, you know, you've had a little action in and then throw something out there like a, a globe light or a, or fly, the, uh, fly a drone up or something to get something to attention and bring it down to straight to that light. And then, you know, you've got, okay, there's all kinds of action, but we don't know what it is. And then you do a pop, and then you hear a pop, pop, pop. I mean, you're bringing something in by just doing something a little different in the air that will mm -hmm. draw them closer to you. But a lot of times, light and stuff like that will make them leave, too, after yeah. a couple of times. They'll leave the entire area because they know you're on to them. Or I got you. I got you. Yeah. Now another thing is, during the daytime when you're new, woods walking around, whatever, listen for, uh, listen for uh, sounds, like uh, bird sounds. You know, if you listen to like, what's the main birds you hear in your area? Robin. Okay. If you hear a robin, and all of a sudden it sounds like it's got laryngitis or sounds kind of odd, keep listening. If you constantly hear that following you on either your left side or your right side constantly while you're in there, they're communicating to each other to let them know where you're at and where they're at. Hmm. Yeah, and listen for little tedious knocks. You hear like a little tap-tap on your left and a little tap-tap on your right. You know, first thing you think of, well, that's a woodpecker. No big deal. And the more you walk, the more you hear it. But you got to listen for it. Because what they'll do is, is that they'll communicate back and forth to each other and try and do it to enough to where you can't hear it. But if you've got yourself tuned in, you can hear what they're doing. Makes sense. Yeah. You know, in, El like in Elkhorn Lake, you know, it's National Forest. It's, got, it's, a, it's, a, it's like a pond in the middle of a big... A big uh, in the middle of the mountains, you know, and there it's blocked on. It's uh, got mountains on all four sides of it. Well, basically three and a half sides of it, basically, you know. Yeah. And and that's one of the main feeding areas for them. They come down. You got the lake area they can mess with. They got the creek that feeds into it. Plus, you got a main reservoir about five miles up the road further that feeds all them streams and everything. So it's like it's like an ecosystem it starts from the top and comes right down, you know. So they can feed anywhere along that stream, you know, and no, and can and and will never be seen if they don't want to be seen and everything, you know. Yeah, I mean, you you get in our in our area, and I'm looking at your all's areas up there too. I mean, y'all know just as well as I do, you can't sometimes see five feet in front of you because the br brush and laurel. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's so thick. I mean, you know, and then trying to get footprints out in the woods like that is next to impossible. Yeah, now I tell you, right across the road from Daniel's camp, when you walk in there, it's like, well, here's the here. I hear this how it is on National Forest. In my area, I have a lot of ninety-nine percent of it is mountain laurel. The further up a mountain you get, the thicker you get. You go in Daniel's area, right on the flats. It's got very, very soft soil. We, we saw two five or six inch tracks.
that was the bill about a half inch in the ground. That's how soft it is. But then you go to other parts of it, and you got standing hardwoods, you got rocks, you know. So Daniel's got a mix of everything, and his 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 area his area runs into West Virginia. My area runs into the Blue Ridge Parkway. So we got two different areas, same national forest, but two different areas, right? And different, different agricultural, you know, lower brush, hardwood, so like that. Because when you go into Daniel's area, it's like going into prehistoric time. Now I got one or two spots like that, but his spot is eat up with it, and they can get, they can get within twenty feet from you, and you would never see them. This is during the daytime. They can get within 20 feet. You'd never know they was there. Oh, hey, Fred, I don't mean to yeah. stop there, but you, oh, know, go ahead. you know what you're talking about? You know, your area's, you know, Blue Ridge, is there uh -huh. the Appalachian Trail, no, you know, West Virginia? Yep. Guess what my area is? <laughs> my area joins the boat. The area that's that right. I've been getting most of, right. the, most of the activity from. You got the Appalachian Trail. Is connecting. Appalachian to the Blue Ridge, and uh -huh. I'm right in the middle of a bowl, just like y'all. Yeah. I didn't realize it until I pulled Google Map up, and I'm seeing this flat, flat land in the middle. Yeah. Mountain here coming down, and I got this one mountain joining the both of them, and I'm right in the middle of it. So it's yep. a new river running parallel right up through it. Yep, and that's, that's their travel route all up and down the east coast. Yeah, I mean, I mean, the rivers around here, the the new river is amazing. And oh, I've, it is. I've seen the Ohio River. When I drove truck. I was across the Mississippi River. They're good rivers too. Mm -hmm. This thing is, I mean, this river from North Carolina all the way through West Virginia is nothing but mountains on both sides of it. Yeah, and that's why the squashes can migrate. And be in different areas, you know. It's like a, it's like a checkpoint, you know. Like when you go traveling, you stop at motels overnight, stuff like that. But I think that's what they do when they travel up. They go like during the summertime, they'll they'll go up up north where it's cooler, you know. It's still warm, but it's cooler.